Yo, what's up? Waiver Wire fiends are back once again to bring you the long and awaited top 10 tight ends that you should be trying to capture in your fantasy teams. Yeah. And yeah, we're back. Uh, we are we are once again um at our guest in uh Nick. I, I couldn't find the word I was looking for there. But we are we are um our God, new, what word is it? Our newest member? Yeah, newest member. New, no, we're, yes. we're he's here. He's here. We are joined. We are joined by yeah. Alvarez. Yeah, this is a mental breakdown on my part, and this is okay. We're gonna get through this together, boys. Damn. Um Nick, being the first one, would you like to go first? Yes, I'm. I feel stu- stupendous right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's great. We oh, started number number man. ten. Number, Not 10. number ten. All righty. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna go with Mike Gesecki. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm gonna do it only because I feel I'm. Like we said in our receiver video, I'm not a fan of Tua. But I do think that as a tight end, that's your security blanket. He has nice hands. They have a lot of weapons on the team. Um, Somebody has to help Tariq Hill out over there. And I think it's just, I mean, for a top 10, tight ends are always a hit or a miss, I feel, after a a few of them. But I do think that he'll have a above average season. I mean, he's not terrible. He's been flirting with top 10. Usually in fantasy, so I'm gonna go with him. Yeah, Caleb, you're going second this time. Okay, at number ten, I have Zach Ertz. He's an old ass motherfucker, but he's still good. And with no DeAndre Hopkins there for the first six weeks, I feel like he's probably gonna ball out because he's still Zach Ertz, and quarterbacks love to target him, especially in the uh, red zone. So. He's definitely going to get you some touchdowns. He's going to get you some PPR points, everything you need. At uh, at number 10, I got Pat Fryermuth. He is the Pittsburgh Steelers tight end. Uh, and what is the second best friend to a, a wide receiver who has zero to little time to throw the ball? It is a tight end. And that is exactly what we're going to see out of Mitchell Trubisky up in Pittsburgh. Um, I highly doubt they're going to have the time to throw to Deontay or Chase Claypool down the field like they're going to want to at all times. Pat, F- Pat Fryermuth should get the uh, bulk of the targets in either garbage time or I have nobody else to throw it to. Najee's not open. I'm going to throw it to Pat. Uh, at number nine, I got the man who is the tight end to what is most likely the number one quarterback in fantasy this year, Dawson Knox. Um, Dawson Knox is probably going to get a ton of red zone targets if Stephon Diggs is not on the field or if they're not going to pound the ball. Um, They have been known to give those touches to running backs in the past, but Dawson Knox has started to evolve into what I would only assume is an elite tight end in the NFL. And as long as he gets his fair share of targets, he should be an easy top 10 pick. At number nine, I also have Dawson Knox. I have him written down as Josh Allen's secret weapon. Hmm. Because last year, he even threw for a touchdown or a two-point conversion. I can't remember. Yep. I, believe uh, it was I, think it was, I think it was a two-point conversion. He threw it to Josh Allen. Yeah, insane. Uh, the guy is definitely trying his hardest to become an elite tight end. If Zach were here, he would say you're all stupid. But uh, Dawson Knox, for sure, as long as man is mentally prepared for everything that's been going on right now and all the stuff he's going through, you know, wish you the best, Dawson. Hope you get better yeah. soon. Absolutely. Uh, he's definitely, definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with, and he's going to do great things. So, number nine, Dawson Knox. Nicasio. All right, y'all's coattail on this. Go Dawson Knox. Y'all, y'all made the points of it. Um, I feel like he was a breakout tight end last year, for sure. Um but I, I do feel that, like I said in the receiver video, that Buffalo team has a chip on their shoulder, and he's playing for a lot more this season, as we know, than just that. So I, I'm going to go with him respectfully at number nine. Number eight, back to you again, Nick. Woo-wee. All right, let's go with the Cowboys, Dalton Schultz. Mm. I only put him at there because I do feel the regression of Zeke coming in. The Amari Cooper being gone, you have a lot of pressure, more pressure on C.D. Lamb. I mean, of course, Dak's going to feed him 
because that's mm-hmm. one of the security blankets for sure. But it did feel like it was a little tough for him to get his looks last year. Like Dak kind of struggled to get him sometimes because they would flirt with their other tight end or they would try to feed Tony Pollard a little bit more. I don't know. I I don't know if it's – I don't believe in Mike McCarthy being able to figure out all those weapons at once or if it's just that I do feel that Dak's going to have those kind of games where he just blow, balls out one game and then the next game he scores like fucking takes you down for three field goals. But So I'm going to put him there as my pick. Right back to you, Caleb. Uh, at number eight, I have Mike Gesicki. Um, I have written down on here – just like in the last video, fuck Tua. Uh, he's going to be hit or miss. But the thing that people aren't thinking about right now is they don't have a running back over there. Their running back situation is ass at the moment. Uh, they got Miles Gaskin, but he's on his way out for sure. He's going to get dumped soon. And then everything else they got going on, they got Sony Michelle. Yeah. And then they got a couple other people. Gasicki's probably going to get a lot of red zone work this year. He's probably going to get you multiple touchdowns at the moment, and he's going to give you a lot of fantasy points. So, yeah, number eight, Mike Gasicki. Uh, number eight, I got uh, the NFC East Dallas Goddard um, from the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I think Jalen Hurts is going to take that next step. Like, we go back to the quarterback you I said it last video as well. Um, I feel like Jalen Hurts is going to take the next this big step this next year. Caleb said the same thing in the quarterback video. So if that's going to happen, Dallas, Dallas Goddard's going to take a, a bigger step in getting his targets. He's going to get uh, probably more looks in the red zone as well. Um, having a tight end that has only had five touchdowns at most in his career is kind of unheard of, especially somebody like Dallas Goddard who's pretty athletic and capable of catching the ball in the end zone. So uh, eight for him. Number seven, I got Dalton Schultz. Um, Dallas Cowboys staying in the same division. For the sheer fact that, like Nick said, Zeke, don't know what that looks like. Um, they trade away Amari Cooper, and now we have this weird, we don't know what the Dallas Cowboys offense is going to look like, but at the end of the day, your tight end is your security blanket. He's been playing with um, with Dak for the past couple of years. Last year, 78 receptions. The year before, 63. His target share is probably going to keep going up, so I would assume that he is going to continue to produce. You guys say security blanket a lot. Uh, number seven, I'm going to go TJ Hawkinson. I've had TJ Hawkinson on my fantasy team for the past like two, three years. That man is a touchdown machine whenever he's healthy. He, mm. can, catch, he can catch long balls. He can run really fast for as big as he is. And he gets a lot of red zone work. I remember one year I won by a point and a half just because he got the final two point conversion in the last 10 seconds of the game. So Hawkinson, 1000%, as long as he don't break his finger again or whatever the hell he did last year, is going to get you points. Nick. I actually have TJ Hawkinson next. And it's only, I mean, Caleb did a perfect job at it, so I don't know if I can backdoor that. But I just, I mean, he's a great security blanket. I I do feel, and see, I said it again, that I just feel with Detroit, it's Detroit. And, I mean, Hard Knocks kind of made me love him a little bit more. But I do feel that there's a, knowing what you're going to be expecting from him this year is what I feel he's going to just not take a big step back. I think he was ranked like top five last year, I believe. And so I, I think it's just going to be a minor step back, but I, I don't put that on him. I just put it on that defenses are now going to be, okay, this is the guy we have to stop pretty much over there for Jared Goff. Yeah, I'm going to go with him there. He'll come Number six. I believe it's back to you if I'm not mistaken. It is. <sighs> I'm gonna go with Dallas Dallas Goddard. Yeah. Um, I'm just AJ Brown being over there and the new offense. I that's what I feel like it's gonna help him. I want to go with my Houston boy and say that Jalen Hurts is gonna do good over there because if he does good, it hurts the cowgirls. But I just honestly I do feel that there, he's gonna feed him a lot. Like he's he's due up. He has nice hands. He has a nice. He's he's in the offense. He's been there. Uh, stuff. I think they're going to look for him a lot whenever 
Jalen hit that little wall that he seems to hit every year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, back to you at six, Caleb. At number six, I have Dallas Goddard. Uh, he's got nice hands. He's always going to get you good uh, touchdowns. He's a red zone threat. And like we've been saying, Houston boy Jalen Hurts is got a chip on his shoulder. He's coming for it this year. Uh, yeah, shout out to my boy Nico who grew up with Jalen Hurts actually and still keeps in touch with him. I think Jalen Hurts is going to have a great year this year, and he's going to make Dallas Goddard his probably number two receiver over there. So, uh, there I have been the biggest, maybe second biggest, because Caleb will never admit that he's second. Um, but uh, TJ Hawkinson has been one of my favorite tight ends in the NFL for a long time. I think this is the year he takes it to six, not top five yet. They're still an elite club of tight ends, but um, I feel like uh, Hard Knocks is going to give him a, a good amount of coverage at the beginning because of what they've seen so far. However, I do truly believe that Amon Ross, St. Brown, and the rest of that receiving core is going to step up, and the Lions might actually do decent this year. Um, he is a touchdown magnet when he is on the field. Um, and as long as he can stay healthy, people forget he had 101 targets two years ago. Last year he had 84. It was a, it was a decrease in volume, but he also dropped uh, 34 of those balls two years ago. And I don't think he'll do that again. Fourth year in the league, Iowa boy. Um, I truly believe he's going to have a breakout year this year that kind of solidifies him as a, as a top six, maybe top five uh, fantasy tight end. Um, continuing uh, at number five, I have uh, Darren Waller. Um, Somebody who we have already said basically everything we can say about the Raiders offense. There's a lot of mouths to feed. He's a, a fantastic talent. Um, and I feel like he'll still get his share of targets, but there's only one ball on the football field. And the quarterback can only throw it to you so many times and still make everybody be happy. Uh, Darren Waller should still get his production as long as he stays healthy. He'll be a top five fantasy tight end for sure. Uh, number five, I have Kyle Pitts. Hmm. The hype is real with the guy. He caught a 52-yard pass the other day. Uh, His quarterback situation kind of sucks. Marcus Mariota is not the best, but he's still not the worst by any means. I just don't know that his offensive line and everything surrounding him is going to do great. But he's also all they got over there now. He's going to be the number one receiver over there for a while, and he's going to get you pretty much anything you need. So number five, Kyle Pitts. I put Kyle Pitts also at number five. He pissed me off last year. <laughs> at him. Um, not his fault, though. I mean, yeah. that team was atrocious. This year, I think Atlanta is probably going to be one of the worst teams in football, depending on Seattle. But it's uh, uh, to say, to answer what you just said, it's like I said in our group chat earlier after somebody was talking about, oh, everyone says I drafted a shitty team, but they still want to trade with me. Yes. You can draft a shitty team, and I can still want players off of a shitty team for a reason. Mm -hmm. He may be on a shitty team, but he's going to be a good player on a shitty team. My my biggest thing in fantasy is I don't care if your team's good, bad, whatever. There's Somebody's got to get that ball. Somebody's got to get some points in garbage time, whatever it is. I don't care. Somebody's going to do something. And I feel he's that guy that, I mean, him and Cordell are really the only two that I can think of. I'm not a Drake London fan, so I don't really care on it but he's gonna get fed i mean he showed that in like you said that 52 yard run dude's a monster athlete like and i mean who knows maybe he gets traded maybe he gets you don't know I, the nfl is weird so i'm gonna go with him there at number five number four back to you nick i'm gonna go with george kittle and i only go with him because for some reason he gets hurt every year <laughs> And not like injured, injured, hurt like CMC style, but he gets the like, nagging injury. Yeah, yeah, he gets yeah. like a nagging hamstring or something. And then he kind of reminds me of uh, Todd Gurley. And Dalvin Todd Cook Gurley more more recently. Yeah, where Todd Gurley had the arthritis in his knee, and if it flared up on a Monday, he wasn't going to play that following Sunday. You know. Yeah. But then he could be fine the next week. Yeah, I mean, it helps if he has, like I said in the receiver video, Trey Lance. I think Trey Lance is a big upgrade over Jimmy. He's going to have Debo looks hungry to go play over there. And, I mean, they have a lot to prove on their end. But I do feel the injury bug, he's just – it's going to be something that you're going to get hit with with him for sure at some point, a little week one or week – like one week or two weeks or something. But I think he deserves it with how much they're going to use him in there. 
Shanahan loves him, so that's my pick. He's a dog. Back to you at number four, Caleb. At number four, I have Mark Andrews. Mm-hmm. I only wrote on here, Lamar be running, which is the <laughs> truth. Uh, it's true. So, Mark Andrews, you know, when he does get the ball, is always a gigantic threat for anyone playing him. He's going to get you double-digit points almost every single game. He's not going to get you into the 20 every single game, but it's always a possibility. So, number four, Mark Andrews, if you see him, he's going in the top 30 at the moment, I believe. So, that's usually a second-round pick, maybe third, depending on how big your league is. But Mark Andrews, always solid. You draft him. You don't even you don't need to worry about a tight end until you have a bye. Yeah, and I feel like that's kind of what the top five tight end like list ends up being. If you have one of those guys, you don't have to worry about it. Um, at four, I got Kyle Pitts. Uh, last year, um, in his rookie season, 68 catches for 1,000 yards. He only had one touchdown, which was a weird number. Uh, but then again, the Falcons never really scored that much last year anyways. You add in Drake London. You have Marcus Mariota now instead of uh, Matt Ryan. Um I feel like we're going to see a lot more of a spread offense than we would just see somebody targeting the most athletic guy on their team over and over again. Um, And that's kind of what the Falcons offense boiled down to last year. So I got Kyle Pitts at four. I feel like he finds the end zone more. He probably gets less targets though. Um, Number three, I got, uh, I got Kittle uh, just because (laughs) I mean, the dude's been top five, if not better, almost every single year, if he doesn't get hurt, um, besides last year and every single one of the, the, the past four seasons, I'm sorry, not last year, the year before, um, if you look at the past four seasons, he's had 70 plus receptions for 900 plus yards and five touchdowns at least, which is more than you can ever ask for out of a, a tight end in fantasy. So, um, Kittle seems like a lock at, at number three for me. At number three, I have Darren Waller. Ooh. Uh, it's like, it's just like Zach would say, he's not a tight end. He's a wide receiver. That's what he got drafted into the league as, and that's what he's going to be. All he did was take a lot of steroids and get bigger and stronger, and he's able to become – shut up. He's able to become a tight end. So he's still just as fast, and he's just as good as he was. He's always going to run slots. He's always going to score for you, and he's always going to put up points. So Darren Waller, I have no problem putting within the top three. Nick, Woo-wee. here we go. I'm going to put Mark Andrews. Mm. And I only do it because that team's got healthy this year. They got hit, hit by the injury bug hard last year. They lost like freaking three running backs right before the season. Uh, they got Bateman over there. I, I do think, you know, Lamar playing for his contract is going to, I mean, play a big part in it. But I do, like Caleb said, he runs. That's If you make jokes, I mean, that's their damn running back. And yeah. that defense is very good. I do feel that that defense will get a lot of uh, interceptions, uh, sacks and fumbles and scores. So you may not get a lot of the offensive power that you had to use. I do think it's close from my one, two, and three. So I'm going to put him there at my three just for that. Okay, number two, back to you. I got... Caleb's boy, Darren Waller, at, and I only think is because he said something where he was talking about how Chucky didn't know how to use him, and he didn't he had plays written up for him in the red zone, and they didn't use him. And I think that he, with Devontae Adams over there, taking a lot of that pressure off, it's gonna. It reminds me of kind of like how Travis Kelsey used to eat. Well, as we know, eat still does. Eat, yeah, would eat in Kansas City. It's like. Who the fuck are you gonna guard? And then it's hard right. to guard him at that anyway. Yeah. I just I think he's gonna squeak by with with all those weapons over there. He'll get you a lot of red zones. Somebody's gonna lose him. Yeah, that's my absolutely. Uh, number two, back to you, Caleb. At number two, I've got George Kittle. Mm. When he's not injured, he's George Kittle, dude. He's gonna get you just as many points as you ever need. Like you said earlier, he's always a top five, if not higher, every single year. And this year, I think he's going to have to put on a show and just continue to be George Kittle. There's really no other way to say it. He you, he has a thousand yard uh, seasons, if not, you know, close to it. And he's always going to get you touchdowns. He's going to get you everything you need. Man's blocks as hard as he possibly can. 
creates room. He's able to do whatever he needs to. So number two, George Kittle. And I'm pretty sure we all have the same number one. Mm-hmm. We don't. <clears throat> we don't. Um, and number two, I got Travis Kelsey. Oh, you're um, stupid. This list sucks. No, it. no, I don't think I am, and I'll explain why in a second. Uh, Travis Kelsey, um, he could very well be the number one tight end. Do not get me wrong. Um, however, when you lose a deep threat like Tyreek Hill, safeties are now able to lock in on the tight end position a lot more than they were before. Sure, they have Marcus Veldes scaling firsthand. I can tell you, he is a speedster. Can't catch the ball like Tyreek, but he can get downfield pretty fast. They drafted Sky Moore. They have Juju Smith-Schuster in the slot. You add all those up as though they need to spread the ball around more. I feel like they're going to focus on the running game a lot as well. Travis Kelsey's still going to get his. You don't need to worry. He'll be a top five fantasy tight end. Could slot, slide into the number one spot. I could very well be wrong. Maybe I'm just, uh, as the fantasy people say, in love with uh, a guy at number one who uh, – I think he's going to get more targets. And at number one, I got Mark Andrews for the for the simple fact that they traded away the number two target on that team in Marquise Hollywood Brown, who had 146 targets last year. Rashad Bateman's still going to eat. He's still going to get similar production to what he had last year, maybe take a step forward. Mark Andrews, though, had 153 targets last year for 107 receptions and 1,361 yards. Nine touchdowns. The dude's going to be the end zone magnet for Lamar Jackson. Although Lamar, Lamar do be running. That is true. I, uh, I I feel like Mark Andrews is going to be the number one fantasy tight end for the sheer fact that he is the number one option on that team. And Lamar is trying to get paid. And the best way to get paid is to show you can run and you can throw for touchdowns and leave the team to win. And to do that, you throw to your tight end. So Mark Andrews is my number one. Okay. Well, it's okay to be wrong. At number one, I got my twin, Travis Kelsey. Uh, he's the best tight end in the league, no matter how any way anyone wants to look at it. Gronk isn't there anymore, so he's definitely going to take the number one spot. Last year, the dude had 92 receptions, even with Tri- uh, Tyreek Hill there, for 1,125 yards and nine touchdowns. This year, he's definitely going to get you into the double-digit touchdowns. and. He's going to have to do more work. I understand that Tyreek isn't there anymore, so they're going to try and guard him as much as they can. But the dude's a monster. He's going to get through there, and he's going to do what he needs to do. He's coming up on his uh, 33rd uh, birthday soon, which usually is kind of when tight ends start to slow down and everything. But he's not showing any signs of slowing down anytime soon. So for this year, I'm positive he's going to be number one once again. Like I said, very well could be wrong. Yeah. Nicasio. Are all wrong. I'm going with Noah. No, I'm just kidding. Nah, wait. <laughs> nah, Travis Kelsey. I think you have to feed him. Your favorite you got a player. few. You have a. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not a Travis Kelsey fan. Nick hates Travis Kelsey. I do. I feel he's a wannabe Gronk. But, anyways. Anyways, okay. yeah, okay. I I don't know. I just I, I think he's gonna get fed. That's Mahomes' number one weapon now, and he's a he's a football player. I mean, do I like him? No, but I respect his game, and he's gonna get his touches. For damn sure. Uh, let's talk honorable mentions real quick. You guys got any? Because I got like two or three. Uh, if um, you guys noticed, I said I didn't have Mike Jacecki on my list. Uh, I I feel like you did a huge disservice to Chase Edmonds. Um, being the running back down there in Miami, uh, I feel like by committee they'll be able to rush for at least three and a half yards per carry and, and get the job done. Uh, and then another one, Cole Komet out of Chicago. I don't know why, but like if Justin Fields is going to be successful with that wide receiving core, the only way it's going to happen is if David Montgomery is a top 10 running back and, and uh, Cole Komet gets 100 plus targets for five, six yard games. So. Uh, Dalton Schultz, because. Fuck Dallas, but I also don't really see him doing too, too much this year. He's sure. going to get you points, so if he's on the board and you need a tight end, he's definitely worth it. Um, But I also like the backup from Baltimore, which is, what's his name? Likely, I believe. Yeah. That dude, that dude is going to be a really good football player, and he's probably going to take some touches away from Mark Andrews, so people need to watch out for it. But also... Shrek from the Texans is going to be pretty good if he gets the starting position, and I wouldn't hate it at all. Yeah. Nick, anything from you? 
I can't believe I'm going to say this. I don't know why. I get a player every year that's a gut player. Okay. And my mine is ugh, it sounds disgusting. Tyler Conklin from the Jets. Oh. His only number receiver, one tight end over there is CJ from uh, the Zada. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. I just feel, I mean, Joe Flacco looks like he's going to start. Joe Flacco's been liking him. He's been working with him a lot in preseason. Yeah. Yep. So I feel, and then Zach Wilson, I, it looks like he uses him a little more. Also, I I feel like he's gonna squeak by. Somebody has to get fucking points over there in the Jets. I think he'll get it. He'll do more than he did over there in Minnesota last year. Great. If you made it to this part of the video, make sure you hit like, comment, subscribe, and drop a comment down below if you disagree with a single thing we said. Uh, if you do disagree with something down there, uh, you can comment. We don't care. We'll, we'll take it in consideration. That's what we'll say for now. We'll respond to you. Wrong, but we'll, we'll take it in consideration. We'll respond to you. I'm not going to mm -hmm. change anything I said, but we'll respond. Unless injuries happen, then I might change some things. But I don't know. No, I'm still going to say what I said. Right. In one okay, of my cool. league, in, in our league, I drafted uh, Kyle Pitts and Darren Waller by mistake, but it's okay. <laughs> that mistake. He drafted the whole Raiders offense by mistake. Anyways, I did it as uh, trade bait. But yeah, well, yeah, it's not working too too hot right now. But that's okay. Yeah, that's because your friend's stupid, but it's fine. That, that's, that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, with that being said, we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Later.